In this video, I will be showing you how to set up your Qt application ready for translation with the use of Qt Linguis, and also how to do the actual translation with Qt Linguis as well. Finally, I will cover what needs to be done to actually utilize the translation files in your application. The example which I am using here as a starting point is the one that was previously used for the sample Qt Quick video, so I have loaded this already inside Qt Creator. As a developer, when you are marking strings as being translatable, then there are a few ways to do this. I will cover the two main ones which will be used for the majority of your strings. These are the TR function and the QSTR function. As this is a Qt Quick based example, then I will show you the QSTR approach first. For any QML based forms that are created using the designer inside Qt Creator, then any text based properties for items such as text, button and so on, will automatically be marked for translation with the QSTR function which we can see by going into the edit view of the main QML file here. As you can see, we have three strings in here that are using QSTR function already. This is the basic approach as it just ensures that this string can be translated. There are more things you can specify, such as the context and a comment to the translator, but we will not go into further detail on that side of things. In order to show the other main function, which is available from QObject, then we will double click on main.cpp and just add a line to show that this is being used, and this will be the QR function. When this is used by a QObject instance, then it will take the class name as being the context for the translation automatically here. So since I am using QObject to call TR on, it will use QObject as the context. So I'll add just a simple string here for the purposes of our demonstration. Finally, on the source code side, we need to make sure that our translations are loaded when the application is started. So we need to make sure that this is done before any of our strings are set in this case. So we will do this right after the application object is created. In this case, we are going to load the translation anyway without doing anything to see what language the system is in. For a more advanced setup, then you will want to do something based on the user's locale in this case. But we will just hard code the file for the test here. So first, we need to include the QTranslator header file. And then we need a QTranslator object, which I will create on the stack. The next thing to do is load my translation file. I have called this simple, quick, and since it will be included in my Qt resource file, I can load it from there. The last thing to do is install this translator on the application object. This will make sure that it translates any string that has been marked for translation. Now before we can translate the files, we need to make sure that we are set up to generate these files. This can be done manually, but we will set it up to generate these automatically for us. So double click on the cmate list.txt file and on the find package line, we will add linguist tools to the packages to be found. Then we add the line q underscore translation, qm underscore files, cmake source dear. simple quick.ts. The ts extension is the one used by the Qt Linguist tool which will be used for translation our strings. What the Qt Create Translation line will do is use the tool to generate these ts files, updating where applicable. But it will also run the tool which will generate the files which will be used by the application at runtime for us too. Now we need to make sure that the qm files are added to the executables and libraries. So we add that after the project sources in the three different places. Once you have done that, you can right click on the Qt project in Qt Creator and click on Build. 
This is so that we can get the first copy of the TS file generated for us and we have a copy of the QM file ready for us too. Additionally, we need to copy the generated QM file for us into the source directory so we can include it in our resource file. So we add the line configure file QM files CMake source dear copy only so that this is done for us. Now that we have our first TS file, we are ready to translate this inside Qt Linguis. So we need to start Qt Linguis. On Windows, this is available inside the Start menu, and on other platforms, you can find it inside the bin directory of the Qt version you are using. To load our TS file, we need to go to File, and then Open. We'll navigate to the location of our TS file, and then select that one. It will ask you for some information about the language that the source code is in and what the target should be. For our purposes, we will just accept the defaults, but you can change this to match what suits your setup. What you will see now is the screen split into three. A list on the left, which shows the different contexts it's as found in a TS file. In the middle will be the list of strings for the selected contexts, and then on the right it will highlight the source code for the string too. This is only available when the source code is available with the translation file and is an optional feature. So for the purposes of this test, we are just going to translate the strings so that they are shown in reverse. Just to make it clear that it is loading the translation and still to make it easy to understand the process involved without having to learn an entirely new language. As the first string is already selected, we can go right into it. Firstly, you may find you want to resize the area where it says source text to be bigger to save having to scroll all the time. You only need to make it big enough to see the area where we can do the translation in, so if you need to, you should do that now. Now click in the text field under the translation to American English United States and write test uh, is this. Therefore it is in reverse. What is next to be done is to mark this translation as done. This makes it easier later on when new strings are added, so it is easy to find out which ones need to be translated. So to do that, we click on the green tech icon in the toolbar. Now that this context is done, we click on the next context on the left hand side and do the same for the three strings listed there. Once you've done all of those, you, we can go to File, and click on Save, and we are ready to do the final steps. Back in Qt Creator, right-click on the QML.QRC file, which is our resource file, and click on Add Assistant Files, and select the SimpleQuit.QM file, which is generated for us at build time from the TS file which we have modified. Now all that is left to do is to run the example. So we click on the green play button and you should see that it is showing our translated strings in the window. If you want to find out more about the different translation functions and also more information on how to use Qt Linguist and so on, then you can click on the links which are part of the video's description for further reading. If you have run into any problems or have any further questions while watching this video, then please feel free to contact the support team via your Qt account. Thank you for watching.